Hi everyone, welcome back. We hope you had a great lunch. I'm Jacqueline, I'll be emceeing the second half of uh, this track. Thank you to Simeon Craft for being our executive uh, exclusive recording sponsor. Simeon Craft creates scalable, high velocity software for their customers' business needs. They specialize in creating SaaS platforms, mobile apps, map and data visualization, video games, and virtual reality. They also have been involved in Techlahoma and Thunder Plains since the beginning, so a very special shout out to them. Everyone's going to the after party, right? That's all thanks to Verge OKC. The Verge is, the cool, is where the cool entrepreneurial folks in OKC hang out. It's not just a co-working sp spot, it is also a clubhouse for movers, makers, and visionaries. Here, awesome ideas don't just stay ideas, they turn into thriving businesses. Thanks, Verge OKC. And last but not least, thanks to our volunteers. We couldn't have done it without all of you. And if you aren't on here, like I'm not, uh, <laughs> but you still helped, Emily pre-apologizes. Thanks for the apology, Emily. Uh, she appreciates every one of us. And so now we're gonna announce our next speaker, which is Rebecca Hartwick. She is a veteran in the recruiting and staffing industry with over 15 years of experience, specializing in IT staffing. She's the founder of her own staffing firm, demonstrating her entrepreneurial spirit. Rebecca's impact goes beyond her professional achievements. She's been a key figure in community organizations like the Oklahoma City Human Resource Society and the Oklahoma Women in Tech, where she served as president and treasurer, respectively. Her success is rooted in her ability to build strong networks and relationships, living by the mantra, it's not about what you know, it's who you know. Today, Rebecca is here to share her secrets for making networking easier, less intimidating, and more beneficial. Join us as she imparts tips and tricks to unlock the power of networking in your career. I'm Rebecca Hartwig. I own Hartwig Staffing, and I have done majority of my career in IT staffing. And I don't know if it's that. Oh. There you go. Thank you, thank you. Uh, I was raised by two IT people that also had their CPAs, and so I, of course, went the route of marketing and then ended up here with you guys. So, um, so let's get into it. Well, first of all, who likes to network and socialize with strangers? Okay, good. And the rest, I'm assuming, are like, eh. So I always like to share this photo to kind of put it into perspective, I think that was me like in second or third grade, and my dad still has that up in his house. And there's that little girl still in me all the time that's like, I still feel like a goober, why would somebody want to talk to me? And everybody around us has that too. Everybody probably thinks back to when I didn't get chosen for this, or I made a fool out of myself in class, or whatever. So don't be intimidated, everybody's just people, so as you think about this, just look around and be like, that person probably feels like that at some point, or that CIO, or that person running this event, you know. So, and it's a really funny picture from the 80s, so. But I feel like some of that is coming back. Okay, so we're gonna talk about why we network, how do we network, and what, we, what do we do after, okay? You excited? Okay. So why do we network? What are some reasons why we might network? New job. Looking for employees. Yes, finding talent, I like that. What else? New ideas. That's all, okay. Yes, so jobs, talent, uh, new ideas, new trends. Sometimes it can be just to meet new people and make new friends that have similar interests. You could learn about a new great vacation. Uh, sometimes it's just good to get out of the damn office or have an excuse not to go home and have a beer afterwards, like hopefully everybody's gonna do after this. So it's not always yes, like yeah, new job, new this, but sometimes it's just building that community so just in case you find yourself needing something, they're there. Um, help support of mentorship. Who's been a mentor or has mentored someone before? Is it kind of awkward to go either ask somebody like, hey, can you, it, it, or was, did, a, did an employee set that up for you, or? Uh, both mentored through employees and just uh, kind of out in the wild. 
Yeah, because you could have a mentor and they may not even know it. You just ask them a lot of questions because they're your go-tos. Um, but, let me read this closer. It says, successful people get ahead during the time that others waste. And so, the fact that y'all are here, y'all are probably already doing a lot of this. Uh, if you have a volunteer shirt on, I'm like, okay, you guys probably do this too. And that gets you ahead because I know at the very beginning I said it's not about what you know but who you know, but it's also not about who you know but who knows you. So that way when they're like, who do I need for this UX designer? Who do I need for this? Or who would be great for this project? How are they going to know your name if you haven't been out showing and talking about what you can and do, right? So, necessary evil. Okay. So how do we do it? Because I feel like I was thinking about like Talladega Nights and that guy's like, what do I do with my hands? It's like, oh, so, okay, this way, sorry. But you know, you know what I'm talking about. It's like, all right, I'm going to walk into a big room and be intimidated and go sit in the chair. Anyways, okay. So who considers themselves an introvert? See, who, who uses that sometimes as why you don't like to network? and socialize sometimes. Mm -hmm. Well, y'all are wrong. Because uh, introverts actually make great networkers because you don't talk as much, you listen more, you're curious, unlike extroverts who have to practice not talking and asking questions and shutting up. So you cannot use this as an excuse anymore. And there's actually something called an ambivert, which is, what? I am. What? Yes, so it's like in a different settings, you're like, this is probably more your jam than knitting con you know, conferences, maybe. Oh, there you go, see? I don't know, anyways, but you get what I'm saying. So a lot of people use this as, oh, it's so exhausting, I mean, you know, but you all make better networkers than you realize. Okay, so attending events. Things to make it easier and less intimidating. Um, to volunteer, like Jacqueline, like she's getting to meet so many people, but she has a very easy excuse to talk to people versus just walking up by herself. Um, set goals. So when you're going, like, I don't know if you've thought about when you go to these, I'm going to try and meet three new people, or I'm going to take two ideas back to work, or I'm going to attend one, one networking event a quarter. That way it's a little more goal-oriented and not just, ugh. Um, I did say show up early because it's way less intimidating to walk into a room of maybe five people than walking into a room of 100. And then what you can do is you can walk in and you can meet Jacqueline or you can say hi to the speaker and now you already know some people and then when everybody else is in here, you're already in the know. And um, bring a wingman. I always like to bring somebody with me because then I can be like, have you met Ashley? You know, and help somebody like add conversations. Plan ahead, you know, know where you're going, so that way you don't give yourself excuses not to go. Like, oh, it's 30 minute drive, I thought it was 15, I'm not going now. Um, know who the speaker is, know the topics, that way you just feel a little more confident when you go in and talk to somebody. Um, it sounds silly, but we're something that makes you feel good, so you're not like uncomfortable or, you know, I, maybe it's because I'm a girl and I think about that, but either way. And then attend on a regular basis. Because the more you go, by like the third or fourth one, everybody's going to know you, and then you're going to be welcoming the newbies in. Uh, so, and people, do y'all know Dawson's Creek? Okay, just making sure. Okay. Now you get there, and what do you do? Uh, offer to help. Oh, I could hand out, you know, things. Um, go talk to someone that's maybe sitting by themselves. Introduce yourself to the speaker, because we also get nervous, too. I think I wandered around like aimlessly, like, oh my gosh, I'm not even doing what I'm going to tell them to do when I got here. Um, sit next to someone you don't know, get in line for food or drinks, whatever. Just remember we're all people, and so don't be too nervous. And then what do I say? Um, don't sell anything, because that'll get you no, no, no. Um, less is more, which is why you guys are great at this. Uh, be curious, make it about them. That's the number one thing people like to talk about is themselves. So uh, be authentic, don't overthink it. It could literally be as something as simple as, I've never been to one of these events before, I'm nervous, who are you? And they might be like, oh, I've been to all of these, you need to meet so-and-so and so-and-so. Um, who all has an elevator pitch? Do you wanna say yours? No, Jack. <laughs> 
Uh, Jacqueline, do you want to say yours? No? Okay. Do you want to say yours? Okay. Can y'all hear her or do you want this? Uh, don't get on me. Okay. <laughs> That was awesome. And that takes a lot of guts. So good job. What was your name again? Lola. Lola. Way to go, Lola. So short, less than a few minutes, what you do, who you are, and make it somewhat memorable, you know? So good job. Um, and that, in practice, I can tell you practice that, so that way, you know, when somebody randomly tells you to do it, you can. But it's an easy, quick way when you meet somebody. Um, and then how to exit conversations gracefully, because you will find yourself potentially in a, in a situation where you're like, I've got to like move on. And that, I actually found and changed out my picture today for this one, because I was like, that is so much better. If you walk around with little hearts and stick it on people like you're in, like bowing out of a text message, and you can just be like, and this conversation's done. No, but it can, you know, just and it's stuff you don't think about. You know, if you find yourself awkwardly standing there for 20 minutes, hey, I gotta go get some coffee. Hey, I gotta go meet my friend, you know. So, and then body language. What am I not saying? You guys have probably heard about this. Some of my favorites are um, mirroring their body language. So if somebody's leaned back, you lean back. If somebody's, you know, I just think if, if somebody talks kind of softer and you're all like, oh my God, this is the best event ever. They might, you know, mirror their body language, mirror how they act, have a good handshake. Um, I know sometimes people get sweaty hands, and I've known people that will do tricks where they'll have like uh, paper towels in their pocket, and they'll like just rub their hand, and nobody notices. It's not like you're sitting here like this. So just little tips and tricks like that. So um, I tend to stand with my arms crossed all the time, but I guess that can come across as not welcoming. So just kind of if you're if you're truly going to go network to meet people, just think about stuff like that. Any others that seem interesting up there? Smile a lot. I've been told to do that because I have RBF on accident, but I do. So, okay. So, what are some uh, tools that will help you with this? Uh, research, I said that earlier, but the more you know where you're going, where the rooms are, who's the speaker, who's putting it on, even maybe if you look at like, if you know Emily's name or whoever, then you can be like, I'm looking for so-and-so. And And it just kind of gives you a little more confidence when you get there and you're not having to worry about all that. Add it to your calendar, make it reoccurring. It's like with anything else, exercising or stand-ups or whatever. If it's not on your calendar, you're gonna make a million excuses not to go. But if it's just there and, nope, can't do this meeting around that time or, oh, can't go to lunch that day, I'm gonna, uh, I have this monthly Techlahoma talk I go to. And then, those goals that you set, whether it's taking new ideas or if you're going to meet somebody, you would uh, um, use like Evernote or Notes app. I'm old school, so I have like a ton of notebooks from when I just first started back in like 2010, uh, where I would like write people's names down and stuff like that. Um, name, as you're talking to people, think like what, what you do when your elevator pitch, think you want to get that out of people. So their name, where they work, and something memorable about them, because you'll use that later when you follow up with them. Um, the trick of saying people's name three times throughout your conversation, because how many of you all met somebody, and midway through you're like, what is their name? And it's awkward, and you don't want to like stare at their badge. I don't know. So it's kind of like, Lola, that was really great. Nice to meet you. So Lola. What do you do? Or tell me a little bit more. Where's your office is? Okay, well, Lola, I gotta go present. And so it's just, it helps you, and then you can go back to your app and like write down that kind of stuff. So, um, let's see here. Networking wise, there's also social media. Now, if you're not a big, it, people do their own thing on social media, whatever. But I have some people that work for me that share a lot of things, follow a lot of things, and Hootsuite and tools like that aren't just for if you're for business. You can get your individual account and manage all of it, and you could use it for personal accounts, twi- I mean, everything, and so it uh, makes it a little bit easier. Business cards, obviously, but they have all those virtual ones now, so if, like, you don't, I mean, I don't even really have business cards. I think since COVID, I just haven't, but, you know, LinkedIn has QR codes, and there's so many ways to digitally share your info really quickly to be like, oh, here's my uh, contact info. 
And then when you're thinking it, and we'll kind of do some examples, but if you're thinking about how do I write a good follow-up message or what's a good tweet about being at Techlahoma or being at Thunder Plains today, chat GPT and Monica and other tools like that that are similar are really great at that. So I don't know if you guys, so it makes that a little easier too. Any questions or thoughts on that? Okay. Oh, yes. Well, it depends. So if you, oh, what's the fastest way to follow up if you have their information? Sometimes it's, you may just get maybe their business card or so you only have their work number and work email. So maybe you go that route or maybe you don't even get that. So you have to go find them on LinkedIn. Uh, and a lot of it, I think, is preference. If you can get somebody's cell phone, I think texting is really the best way. Unless, and that person won't give you their cell phone if they don't want you to text them. So, um, but I go through LinkedIn a lot or if I have their, pers their email. That was a good question. Okay. So what do we do after? So we went and found our events. We went and set our goals. And we went and met three people and learned two new things to impress our boss with. What do we do? Nothing. I'm just kidding. Okay. So you follow up. So whether it's LinkedIn or whatever, and that's where you use that information. You know, Lola, great. You did a great job, you know, doing your elevator pitch. Uh, love to hear more about your company. Maybe we could grab coffee or whatever, you know, making it warm for them. Cause, uh, so follow up, keep your promises. If you say you're going to send somebody a book or a podcast or something, do it because they will remember that and uh, keep those. Send a handwritten note, email, text, however. Um, invite them to lunch or coffee. If you're really out there, you could take a picture with them, tag them in a, a post saying you were there and saw them. Um, say hi to them at the next event or invite them back, like that could be an easy message, are you gonna be at the next one? Because uh, then you'll know somebody there. And then, I can't tell you how many times even I've been to places, and I'm afraid to go up to somebody that I met like three months ago, because I'm like, what if they don't remember me, and they're gonna, it's gonna be weird. And then, I didn't, so, you can be that person that's like, hey, I remember you. What's your name again? I don't know. And then, uh, say hi to him, so. Okay, so. I looked up or came up with ideas for elevator pitches and like follow up messages and maybe social media posts. Because who all is really active on social media? Okay, that's what I thought. And then uh, also, like, what would you say in a message that you're like, am I going to sound like a weirdo? This person's probably, you know. So um, this one is I'm a code maestro, a bug whisperer, and a software sorcerer. I turn caffeine into code, transform errors into opportunities, and specialize in making the impossible function seamlessly. So there's some there's serious ones and silly ones, but somebody would remember that if somebody if you if you said that. Or I'm a tech whiz turning ones and zeros into solutions that make your gadgets jealous. Or I'm just a software developer turning ideas into code for a seamless digital experience. Do you think you guys could come up with one just like real quickly? No. See that, write that down in your notes. Be like, that's one of the things, my goals I'm gonna set for myself. I'm looking, I'm just kind of kidding, but. Okay. Um, follow up messages. So, you know, hey, fantastic meeting at Thunder Plains, you know, pretty basic. Like if somebody wrote you that, would you guys be like, oh, okay, that was nice. Spam, is that what you said? <laughs> And then post, these are just, and all I did is I used ChatGBT and it took me like less than five minutes. And I asked a few times like, okay, write me a, um, a witty elevator pitch for a software developer. And those tended to be a little too salesy and so I just said a short witty way to explain that you're a software developer. Explain Thunder Plains, you know, Write me a Twitter post to talk about attending Thunder Plains. Write me a follow-up email for somebody I met at Thunder Plains. And it was just like, and then you can adjust it. So I'm sure, do you guys all use these tools? But have you thought about using them for stuff like this? Okay, good. 
My mother used to do this to write in birthday cards. And I saw her do it one time asking Siri for like a nice birthday card for somebody turning 50, like what to write in it. And I was like, is this what my cards are? Every, cause she sends me a lot. And so there you go. Anyways. Okay. So that was kind of a lot and I did go through it kind of quick. So you guys might get out of class early. Um, mainly there's no more excuses. Introvert, eh, you know, it's like people are doing this and they're going to get ahead and it's going to be, you know, again, it's more about who knows you when those opportunities come up. Prepare, smile, you know, follow up with people uh, and repeat. And just remember we're all goobers really, you know, a little shy. So, um, there's me. There's my email. If somebody wants to email me and say, great job, Rebecca. So. Any questions? Oh, come on. Lola's got a question. I wish I had a giveaway. Okay, did everybody hear her question? Because I'm, I'm like you, and I've just kind of gotten used to knowing like there's different personality types, and you know, so the more you go, because I use these same tips, but I would love to hear what you guys would say. <laughs> do, 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 do. So that was that. I love that because that, when I said mirroring energy, you, that's what you want to do. So if they're a little more, they're, I feel like shyer, and it's more just they're just more direct. And there's, I, I love recruiting IT people because they're to the point, direct. There's not a lot of fluff, and it's just like, like we get things done. And yes, um, but. But it's, but it's true. That happens. Like how she's thinking none of y'all would want to talk to her, and that's not the case either. It's just knowing if you're at a conference like this, research and prepare and know what this group is wanting to hear to talk about. They're not wanting, you know. See, that's how, that's, yeah, that is, that's great. Oh, go ahead. I'll share just a little bit, but there was another a hand raised. Uh, oh. Sorry. It's very direct. So, um, I have found that programming, I'm probably the most extroverted introvert ever, <laughs> or at least among programmers, and I have found myself transitioning from my old school to the old school. If you're a programmer, Do you guys think that's accurate? <laughs> I would tie that back to people like to talk about themselves, make it about them, be curious about them. So 
I'm excited about the work you're doing. You seem passionate about it. Tell me about it. Similar kind of way, not being like making them sound smart, but making the work they do seem very important and intriguing to you. And so that's kind of how I would spin that because y'all are all here to learn. And if you are somebody that's wanting to meet other people, you know, ask about them, be curious about them, let them share about yourself more than you're trying to tell them what you do. Da, 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 da. Um, well, no, yes, sorry, I'm sorry. I'm good. And then there was somebody back there. Go ahead. I don't think so either. I think part of what um, one of uh, our superpowers is, if you will, is as engineers and developers is being able to uh, hyper focus on our work and get in that flow and literally have hours go by where we don't even feel like time is gone. And I think uh, part of what you said was uh, we're passionate about what we do and we would like people who, uh, who share that. Yeah, I've, what you do is amazing. I, I can't, it's it, taking code and creating some of the amazing apps and stuff that's out there. It's, it's fascinating. Introvert is not a bad word. That's why I threw that up there because I was like, you all make, y'all do so many better things, sometimes better leaders because you're curious, you focus, you're not as chatty. Like I said, I have had to work on stopping and listening to people. I mean, I'm better at it now, but it is not a bad word. I would not be remotely. And like how Ian Beaver, it's your, it depends. So thank you for sharing that. Gentlemen. strangers yeah absolutely uh, being authentic being curious and I think if you do it enough and you walk up and you kind of catch somebody you kind of get that look like hey okay you just kind of figure it out but it goes both ways too because there's a lot of times when I first got into staffing um, IT professionals, a lot of the developers, they just got to go sit in a room and code, and they didn't have to interact with a lot of people, and that's changed. And so you kind of have to do the opposite of what extroverts have to do and work on those people skills to, okay, i got to make this business analyst, like sit down with them and actually talk to them about all the stuff they want to talk to me about. And we have to get along and build rapport, so I have to turn that on, you know, which is not our natural instinct. So you do have to go the opposite direction as introverts, how extroverts have to, like, take a deep breath, you know, pause for 10 seconds to see if they have something to say. Well, I mean, now I feel like very few IT jobs or tech jobs, you're not having, like, people are now making sure they have social skills that they could go set an executive meeting or potentially have to pitch a product or... Uh, and so a lot of it goes the opposite direction. So these are good skills to learn. I know, and thank you for asking that. That was a, yeah. yeah, go ahead. Well, and that's the mix. That's like when I meet in the middle, which is why I like to talk about this with tech groups that don't normally go to this natural way of doing it. And having tasks and, you know, objectives helps you do it versus your natural instinct. And a lot of my natural instinct, that I have times where I'm like, I just want to go sit in the corner and I don't want to talk to anybody. And I'm going to pull my phone out and look down and not be approachable because that's the mood I'm in. So, but, uh, yeah, you have to do it both ways. And like because if you want to get promoted or if you want to, oh, see, now I caught up on time. What? Oh, go ahead, Jen. Okay, go ahead. Uh, so how do you deal with, so after an event, you've met a person,
person, you're trying to set up a like informal interview or like a coffee meetup. How do you deal with conflicting schedules or like flakiness on that individual's part? So some of that is going to be your conversations you had with them at the event because I would assume it would be mutual especially with a group like this I don't so she asked if you did meet somebody that you're like man I would love to go pick their brain and have coffee with them and talk about something and they either keep rescheduling or they're flaky how do you handle that so I think with this kind of environment I would assume there would probably be a pretty good conversation had and that's why it's important to make it about them be authentic when you are talking to them, actually listen, remember their name. If they are taking their dog to the vet or something, bring that up in your message. And they're going to be like, oh, this person is actually genuinely listening to my conversation. And we both have the same interest in UI, UX, or whatever it may be. And we can go geek out over that, over whatever you guys decide to do. And then if somebody's just not intrigued or interested in me meeting with you, then you're like, well, that person's not cool. You know, but hopefully, like in situations like this, y'all are all here to learn and are like-minded and have a similar interests. Does that help? Because I wouldn't chase down somebody. Well, I mean, I'm in staffing. I stalk all of you guys, but that's different. Um, but I wouldn't chase down like a somebody else if they were blowing me off. And then hopefully, people don't do that. So hold on. I think he raises. That is a great point to make because you never know what somebody else is going through. Because there's times I've probably been perceived as in a bad mood and not very friendly, and I could have been, who knows what could have happened that day. Or one of us has been, you know, the same. And so that was good. That was a good follow up. Hold on, there was a gentleman over here that had a. So his question was, how do you come across, like in virtual would be a great, like if somebody's really that busy, you don't always have to go to lunch, you know, you 10 minute phone call or, you know, but um, trying to make sure your message, if it's like LinkedIn or an email comes across, because yeah, LinkedIn, it can blow up. Like, I mean, the messages you get are ridiculous. That's why it's so important that when you do meet someone, you remember, like you pay attention and listen to them, what they're talking to you about. I, I know I gave a bunch of that stuff, and I'm like, but it works, and it's serious, because it's like, remember their name, remember where they work, write it down. So when you go back and, and t you can even say, I'm going to shoot you a LinkedIn invite, look for my name, you know, or I'm going to shoot you an email, and I, I would follow up about this. And so that way, they're, they're going to see your name, or they're going to say, I met you at so-and-so, I really liked your talk, or I really enjoyed this, you know. 15 minute chat or coffee, would you be up for that? And it just, that's more genuine versus like, I'm so and so with da 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 da, and I sat in the back and watched you talk, and it was fantastic. You know, you, so that's why doing that kind of stuff helps. Because it will stand out in a message, especially if you're like, I'm going to LinkedIn request you. I'm trying to go in order. Go ahead. That's a pre preference. Uh, I don't think it, I, I wouldn't say it would matter either way. I would just say, like when somebody walks up, hey, what do you do? Or who are you? Just, that, and this again is why it's not y'all, your natural instinct to have this like a quick, like how Lola was like, I will tell you exactly what I do and I have practiced it. Well, like we have to work on things that aren't our strengths. It's like kind of practicing what you might say. And then 
it's real smooth and quick, you know. So it could be funny. I'm, I tend to be funnier than I would be serious. Plus, if I'm at these kind of stuff, if I say I'm in staffing, it's like, oh. And like, so I, I help people find jobs during the day, and then I wrangle two boys at night and two massive dogs. And, you yeah. know, it's like, oh, okay, more lighthearted. So it depends. It depends on the purpose and, like, the audience. It's like you're talking to a CIO or some, you might, you might be a little more specific about a project you're working on. So. And that's, that is perfect. You don't, by networking, you don't always have to go to an event. And so what he's saying is he has his LinkedIn group. And you're not the only one that has felt isolated or sets and is like, yes, I know we all go and work and get you know, hyper-focused. But it's also like, man, it would be cool to have somebody else to chat with, especially if you're virtual or working from home. Um, but going through and you being more proactive and setting a goal, like I'm going to message two people that, are, that they're obviously connected with you and just say hi or grab coffee or have a beer or do you, do you go to these events? Because again, it's who's going to know you when an opportunity comes up or a project's going to come up or a promotion's going to come up. Or you might be that person that's like, well, I know so-and-so is really good at this. They're going to be my go-to person that I talk to to help me with my project or vice versa. I used to, somebody, um, an, an IT person said they had their board of directors, and so they had kind of a handful of people that they went to for certain things, and they were informal mentors, but it was like you had one person. Like he went and had lunch with me once a month because I was more social, and he's like, I got to get people to want to like me, and I got to build rapport with these business analysts, and I got, and you, you go out there and talk to a lot of people, so I kind of want to know what books you've read and what you do. And then he has other people that he went to, and he called them his board of directors, that were more technical or more getting in the corporate ladder or whatever it may be or finance or whoever. And so he had specific people he has met that he kind of put on his list of like, for this problem, I go to them. For advice on this, I go to them, which that's all you get through doing this kind of stuff. So. Oh, was there, oh, sorry, I'm sorry. Like interview, like a, what do you mean? Like if you're looking for a job or something, yeah. it will make it go so much quicker if somebody meets you in person or, or, or somebody else ha refers you in and say, oh, I've met so-and-so or, oh, I've worked with so-and-so or I've seen, seen them do a tech talk at a user group. Man, that guy can code, whatever it may be. And it does help it move a lot quicker versus just sending a, I mean, it really does go back to who you know. I talk to a lot of people that say, I mean, they get, that, this is why I do what I do is because I network and meet and my clients trust that I'm out literally meeting people and I'm involved in the community and paying attention to what's happening. So yes, it would make that go a lot quicker. Because if they see some, oh, who hires people? Does anybody in here do any of that? So I'm going to say, if you, if one of, if somebody that you are impressed by at an event or whatever, all of a sudden applies or shoots you a LinkedIn message saying, "Hey, I've heard a lot of, about your team. I'd be interested," because most of the time, really good talent isn't looking, and so you don't just assume they're looking. And man, you'd get a message like that and be like, "Hell yes!" Skip over all these. Written, uh, but anyways, yes, it does help it go up quicker. Yeah, go ahead. Well, and there's a lot of times jobs don't get posted on timely or HR wrote them or they have a laundry list of 25 things they need and that's not really what, you know, um, or situations like that happen. Or they're just not posted. I bet 
yeah, so. Or you hear about it, and they are going to post it in three weeks, but they'll go ahead and meet with you because they know you, and they'll, they'll offer you that way. So it does make that go quicker. Good example. And congrats. <laughs> okay. Any, that was really good job, guys. Y'all shared a lot of great info. Is there anything, any other questions? I know it's not easy to share all that stuff, so really good job, seriously. Um, again, that's me, my info, if you guys want to ask me any questions or whatever. But uh, otherwise, hope you got something out of this. Have some fun. Set those goals. Go. I'm just kidding. Okay. <laughs>